We are on kick, K-I-C-K dot com. We are live. But by the time you see this, we probably won't be, so just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we go live and you happen to miss it and you just want to see some highlights, if we have any, they'll be on this channel above me. We also got the Patreon. Five, three, five shows running per week, Monday through Friday. Might miss sometimes, but you know. This is everything that's actively on there or has been on there. Don't forget the merch. You get me. Um, and we also got the Discord. Everything is down in the description below. The links to all of this is in my link tree. G4s exposed for abuse on teenagers in the UK young offenders jails. So all these documentaries we be talking about, be hearing about, I got some little proof or whatever. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm here only for educational purposes. This is on the BBC, right? Undercover in a prison. And G4 is a private security firm. Prison for teenagers. Right. <laughs> Undercover in a prison for teenagers. Home to these 12 to 18 year olds. Custody officers controlling by menace, even brutality. You shouldn't. Thank you very much. I understand that these are prisoners, but they are still children at the end of the day. I don't think you should be able to work in a young offender's prison unless you have children. If you don't have kids and you're working in a young offender's prison, like you're more likely to like not give a not care. You're not more likely to not care that they're children and not realize it. One of the world's biggest security firms, G4S, is paid millions to look after these young inmates. But not like this. If you surround adults and authority figures. See to me like that's that that type of behavior, you would never do that in a in a real prison. Like this guy right here in the blue, you would never do this to a real prisoner. Because he might get his get back. He might spin a block on you. Like you you're he's a weirdo. To me, that's weird. He's weird. <laughs> If you surround adults and authority figures that behave in such a manner, it's not going to fix him, it's going to make him worse. Right. Tonight we ask, is G4S failing some of the most vulnerable youngsters in the country? 12 to 18. <laughs> All right. Yes, have a wander around. Medway Secure Training Centre near Rochester in Kent. This is a prison not like other prisons. It's home to around 70 boys and girls, aged 12 to 18, who are accused or convicted of crimes from theft to murder. I'm it's a good little bit of journalism from the BBC, finally. Here to investigate. Or do they normally do? Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Right, I'm not even going to talk. The teenagers are being mistreated, bullied, and even abused by custody officers. I've got a job with G4S, who run Medway, as a custody officer. The inmates here are called trainees. There's up to eight in each unit, looked after by two or three custody officers, like me. Ten years, isn't it? And then, how much is 
So he went undercover disguised as a, a, a prison officer. They're sent here specifically because they're vulnerable. Or at risk. They're also challenging. This is Billy, not his real name. Well done, mate. Well done. He's 14 years old. G six. Fourteen. Hold them. He's been in and out of trouble for most of his life and is now at Medway because he attacked someone. Now curl him up. I can't do that. Curl him up. He's just arrived from a secure children's home, which couldn't cope with him. I bet you 60%, 70, 80% of the people in here, young offenders, are coming from single parent homes. Or no parent homes. It's very important as a man to be in your kid's life. Rather it's a, rather it's a daughter or a son, it's very important. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what type of relationship you got with your baby mama. I don't care what type of relationship you want with your baby mama or that you don't want. I, like, your kid ain't got nothing to do with it. Because this is what happens. As much as he drives me to the brink of going, I just can't do it. And you know why they, they, they show this much aggression to male authority figures? Because they never had one growing up and any type of male authority figure that ever steps in is trying to step in over aggressively yeah i remember i was one of these little kids so i know i know i can tell you exactly what it, what the problem was when when people tried to step in like you oh, i don't have a father figure i was not raised by men i was raised by women so a man talking to me in an authoritative way you're going to have to pipe down. You're going to have to let your ego go and talk to me nice because you're not going to get the results you want if you come in aggressively. This is, it's, it's very simple. You got to know your personnel. Just like you, when, you, when you go to a job interview, you know, what's, you, know what to, you know what's going on. When you're talking to these kids, know their background. If they do not have father figures, you cannot come aggressive. They're not going to respond to it nicely. Simple. There's still a little boy in there who is just lonely and doesn't know what to do. It's pretty sad, really. It's Medway's job to keep Billy and the other young inmates safe, provide high quality education and rehabilitation. Chill out. Before starting work at Medway, G4S provides all new recruits with eight weeks of basic training. There are three main grades of custody officer, training center assistants, like me, team leaders, and the most senior, duty operations managers. We're taught that we must keep youngsters in our care safe, and that if there's trouble, we may have to restrain them, but only if absolutely necessary. It's not your job to harm anyone. If you harm someone, you must assess the use of force. Okay? Uh, so the young person says, I'm free, what's personal? Young person says they can't breathe. If we check use excessive adjust. force, we can be disciplined or even prosecuted. Prosecution. Out of the training room and in the prison, it's a different world. It's my 13th shift and I'm in a classroom. I'm waiting with a female custody officer and three inmates for the next class to start. One of them is 14-year-old Billy. He's shouting at Gareth, a team leader, who's outside in the corridor with Chris, a duty operations manager. 
He's gay. Gareth comes to the door and tries to get in. Then it looks like Billy may be trying to reach for the female officer's radio or keys. I don't expect what happens next. First response means emergency. He restrains Billy and I have to help. Other officers arrive. Including Chris, the most senior officer present. He's the one with the red watch. He has his fingers on Billy's throat. During training, we were repeatedly Yo. told to always protect. Yo, he has him like this in a headlock. Airways. Choking anyone is never allowed. <laughs> Dr. Andrew McDonald is one of the most published experts on how to handle challenging behavior, including physical. How is this not child abuse? Like, they, like these dudes, whoever these dudes are, these G4 officers that are violating the, violating the handbook and violating these children, this is child abuse. I don't, it's okay that, I mean, they're in prison, but it's still child abuse. Restraint. If a normal adult outside of prison did this to a child, a bad child, or someone who was like, oh man, he's, bis dis he's, he's misbehaving, it's child abuse still. Yeah. He's got his fingers right in there. I can actually see them in there. There's, there's applying pressure there. I can't he's breathe. Really dangerous. He's telling you he can't breathe, so let go of him. That to me is an example of actually excessive force while applying restraint. Hurting inmates in this way is against the rules. It may also make these youngsters more likely to reoffend. If I was a young person in that situation, why is he still holding them like that? I'd be pretty angry. Also, these people are role models, so what they're doing almost makes it legitimate for those young people to also be violent and aggressive. Billy is being forcibly taken to his cell. This is a 14 year old kid, right? Probably hasn't hit puberty has no male strength, has no real, there's no real like, like you're not, you're really not intimidated by this kid. He cannot harm you by just swinging on you. <laughs> you're a grown man, you're pushing 40. Your hairline is receding, I see it. And this is, <laughs> yeah, you were definitely bullied in school. Whoever this guy is, with the red and black tie, with the red, like he was definitely. Kid's 14, he still has baby fat. Like, I look. don't know how much weight Gareth's putting on Billy's arm and wrist. All of it. But it looks painful. <laughs> well, that's a 14 year old, probably very traumatized boy. The fact that these kids have actually been involved with crime, some of them don't make, commit some serious crimes doesn't make them any less human. It takes the team of custody officers nearly eight minutes to get Billy into his cell. This is like over overkill for sure. They overdid their job. He acts tough. But Billy has mental health issues and behavioral difficulties. So he has documented mental health issues, and this is, it only gets worse. At the end of it all, he looks broken. He's scared, he can't, he can't breathe, you know, he's crying, 
And, and you just see a child who's literally just kind of been manhandled. Excessive use of force. It was not necessary. At all. I didn't see the necessity in this. I know when these children wind you up the way he was winding that officer up, it can be hard. But they are there to do it. Oh, they showed this Billy's mom. I hope she sued the F out of them. Job and to help that child to rehabilitate. And I can't see how they're going to do that. Seeing that just completely blows everything I thought out the water. Gareth, the team leader who began the restraint, tells us how he's going to justify it. Went for a radio, I was trying to get into the room, but thought his foot has got in there, got hold of me. <laughs> Is he serious? The room, but thought his foot has got in there, got hold of me. That's pretty much it, really. Billy may have been reaching for the radio, but he wasn't trying to grab Gareth. Billy was trying to defend himself. You know what's crazy? He was trying to been reaching for the radio, but he wasn't trying to grab Gareth. Billy was trying to defend himself. Something similar happened to me my sophomore year, my junior year. There was an off-duty cop that worked at my high school, Meathead. Definitely did steroids, like one of those. Uh, and I had talked to my dean already. She said, if you're ever having some issues or you're ever angry and you want to leave school, just leave. You're a junior. You're almost a senior. Like, yeah, because we could, we could do that at my high school. We could just leave whenever we wanted to. Cool. So one day I was arguing with my girl. I don't, I don't even, I didn't even have a class next. I had an empty mod, no class. That's what my modules were 15 minutes, I think. Four modules were a class, a 40-minute class, right? 30, an hour class. I had an empty mod or two. So I just left. I was out, I was walking. I was going to walk across the street to the mall. The mall was right there. So I, I was almost off the school property. Security guard comes. He's like, oh, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing. He's like, I see you arguing with the girl. I was like, yeah, that's my girlfriend. You see people arguing with their girlfriends all the time in school. And then I told him, I was like, yeah, my dean said if I need to leave, if I'm angry, I could just leave. You can call her. And I, and I told him, not, he said, oh, don't tell me what to do. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> okay. So he grabs, like, I'm like, all right, I don't even want to go there with you. I continue to walk. They're not supposed to grab you at, at, in high school. They're not supposed to grab. Security guards are not supposed to grab you. Not supposed to touch you. They're not supposed to initiate any contact unless you do, unless they're defending themselves. So this guy, I got my backpack on. He grab, you know how the top of your backpack got that little hook right there. He grabs the top of my backpack and pull. Remember, in high school, I'm I'm still this big. <laughs> I'm a big. I'm I'm not this big. I'm this tall. And my junior year in high school, I was like six one. I was six one. I was like one ninety, one one eighty or something. But I was pretty skinny, so. He pulls me, and then I, like, turn around just to turn around and get him off my backpack. And I'm talking like this. My pinky grazed his lip like this. I, I could, I, right hand to God, I swear to God, my pinky grazed his lip like this. He got on the walkie-talkie and said, I've just, been a, I've just been struck by a student. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I just laugh. I, just, I get up against the wall. I'm like, I ain't even going to fight you, no <laughs> Like, but he's trying to manhandle me. But I'm six one. But I'm I'm six one. I lift weights. I live. I'm big. I'm in there. I don't lift weights. I'm naturally strong. I'm six one, and he's a meathead jock. Like he's in the gym all the time. He's trying to manhandle me, and I'm looking. I'm and I'm just holding my ground. My center of gravity is just better than whatever he was trying to do, and I'm making it very hard for him to move me. And I, I can see it in his eyes. His ego is, his pride is so hurt that he lifts weights every day and he cannot move this 16-year-old kid. I'm like, ah, oh, man, dude. So, and I'm like, I tell them, I'm like, yo, don't, you guys have cameras. There's cameras. I never struck, I got expelled from school for this. For this situation, I got, I got expelled for this situation. 
And I'm like, there's cameras. Why am I getting expelled? I didn't hit this dude. Y'all can clearly see me walking away and him grabbing my backpack. That's enough right there. Y'all don't need to see if I hit him. He grabbed my backpack. So at any effort, I'm defending myself. Why are you grabbing my backpack if I'm clearly walking away from him? Like, come on. So, and me, like, man, the school was in cahoots with them, everybody. They didn't want nothing. I went to, keep in mind, I'm, I went to a, a predominantly white school. So, I'm not saying nothing about the teachers. I'm not saying nothing about the students. But, but, them handling, like, the security guards there were bad, man. They couldn't, I don't know. They didn't know how to handle, like, what I came I, I was coming from, like, Evanston, predominantly black. You know what I'm saying? North side Chicago, predominantly black. Coming to a white school. There was no, you know what I'm saying? I was, like, one of the first people to come over there. At, <laughs> I don't know. It was just weird. They're all weird over there, huh? in my opinion. G4S investigate. One of you can wait in the hot fish room. Yes. Keep in mind, my junior year, I had turned it around. I was on honor roll my junior year. I was doing all the things that I was supposed to be doing my junior year. They didn't get no, they didn't care. <laughs> Gareth and two other custody officers say the restraint was justified. You didn't see anything untoward happen or for no, not really. Gareth or literally happened in like 30 seconds. Yeah, they're going to stick together. To continue our investigation, I feel I have to stick to the story too. Three weeks later, Gareth is allowed back to work. Before broadcast, we inform the authorities about our evidence. G4S currently runs England's three secure training centres. But later this year, it will stop running one of them, Rainsbrook. Oh, man. Ah, oh, man. I can, I can tell y'all more about this guy, man. That security guard, that same security guard that did that to me, he was a P-E-D-O. So I promise you. Like, I literally was walking to class one day. I was late, and it was this girl named... I ain't gonna name her, but, like, she was... She always used to wear... Like a little, the colorful tool tops, the, the shirt, I don't know what they call it. And then she used to wear jean dresses, the jean skirts. This, this guy, I seen him running full speed to catch her walking up the stairs to look up. I'm like, this guy is, <laughs> you're weird. Like, so I had knew he was a weirdo already. And I, and I think that's what really made him do that type stuff to me. That's what made him take it there. You know what I'm saying? Cause he, he he knows that I know about him. <laughs> I wish I remember his name, bro. Cause I like thinking back on it is angry at me. Inspector of prisons found evidence of abuse. G4S still has the contract here at Medway. Oh, I named the school. This is Niles North High School. I, I still hate them to this day. There's nothing that Niles North High School could ever do to make me not like them. <laughs> uh, there was some good teachers in there, man. Mr. Chan, shout out Mr. Chan. That was my history teacher. He made school worth coming to. To this day, I love that dude. And he don't even know that he made school worth me going there. I went to school just because Mr. Chan was cool. Salute to him. There are some deep questions to be asked about what was happening here that go beyond individual staff behaving badly. Also, it's got really concerning echoes of what we found at Rainsbrook Secure Training Center. Many of the staff I meet are okay. A few are amazing. But some really worry me, like this man, Anthony. He was an ordinary officer like me for 18 months before being promoted to team leader. I'm supposed to learn from him. Here he's boasting openly in the kitchen about hurting a 14-year-old child. Oh, 
This is the exact same person that that officer was at that school. It's not just Anthony. After work at the staff area, another team leader also seems to revel in aggression. Oh, straight in. Slam. <laughs> what? Is that okay? I had a thing on the bed. Fingers in the throat. Bent his wrist up. He's like... That's what you mean. Why does stop pissing me off, you little... Just, you what know. was he doing? Being denying. Being rude. It's Anthony, though, who talks most often about hurting the inmates. Stabbed him, yeah. Where? In the leg and the arm. Anthony. With what? A pen? Anthony. Oh. Did he go in? Yeah. Actually went in? Yeah, a little bit. The leg one did. <laughs> I laugh along. So I'm telling you, a lot of this is mid the mid ego. That's why if you don't have kids, you shouldn't be working around kids. Me, per personally, that's my thought. And so he'll continue to trust me. But it's not funny. I'm skeptical about these claims until I see Anthony in particular with kids, with my own eyes. He can be an effective Is this Billy again? Team leader. But he can also be a bully. Well, let that have him then. It's 14 year old Billy who was restrained in the classroom, who Anthony picks on a lot. I'd reported to Anthony that Billy hadn't cleaned his room. All I asked you to do was clean this door, and you ain't all you done. Done all the shit, and not done nothing ever. No. It's uncomfortable to see because I've got a good relationship with these lads, and they're still kind of laughing and joking. But you can tell that they're uncomfortable. I mean, essentially, it's just bullying, bullying kids, um, bullying them into doing what you want. Well, it's been a train that was this is another male team leader, Matt. Billy is difficult and sometimes attacks staff, but it's beginning to look like he's being targeted. I was definitely being targeted. Three times in the last 15 minutes, three different staff members. Like. Matt tells me he's looking for an excuse to hurt Billy and tries to enlist my help. You're, if it's me, you don't do a restraint, then I'm doing it, get it crazy. I know I'm safe, but if someone's there that, that I know is dodgy, but he needs to get hurt. Yeah, yeah. It's me, you, and... Billy knows what will happen if he gives Matt that excuse. Trevor, what tr I want? And I'll turn off what I want. But don't get rude. Or... Why am I going to threaten you to let you try and beat me up? Yeah. Get off my blanket. Yo. To protect the youngsters and staff at Medway, CCTV cameras record pictures, but not sound, except in places like bedrooms, classrooms, and in the kitchen. Like here, when Billy mocks Liverpool Football Club. So what is matter? Hooligan or something? Like what? What? Like what's going on? Say, Tony's full of pool. I knew it was full of pool. Full of pool. Full of pool. Full of pool. Then this happens. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, no. Literally kind of pushed him, shoved him down, got his thumbs into Charlie's um, back of his neck, and then put one of his hands on the top of his head and kind of dug it in. And then he like, I get it. Okay, like, football is a, you know what I'm saying? But don't touch, like, like it ain't that, this is a 14-year-old kid. This is what I'm talking about. These people have no, they can't. He, Matt cannot have a child because he wouldn't be doing this to a child. Because if somebody did this to his child, he would be, you know what I'm saying? On Like, on 10. Like, that's why I'm glad I'm a dad now. I just hope I just hope all of these teachers and all of these people in power just know what's going on. And I'm in Florida. Don't play with me. 
the, the rules is different in Florida. He got like part of his knuckle and kind of dug it into the back of his head, like around there. There are no cameras here and Matt knows it. His inappropriate behavior is hidden. I find that harder to deal with than the violence, if I'm honest. I mean, you think of abuse in these situations and you think it would be sort of one member of staff slightly digging a child when nobody else is around. But looking at this, it is so openly obvious that it is just a day-to-day -day management strategy for them. For sure. If he was a full-grown adult, they would never go work in, like, adult prisons, these dudes. Which is despicable. It's bedtime. Because at the end of the day, in an adult prison, you know what them adults going to do to them? Sugar kettle. <laughs> you get me? You Anthony's know what I mean? That's what's going to happen. Billy up in his cell. <laughs> it sounded like Billy was in pain, but I didn't know why. After the late shift at the staff area outside, Anthony explains. Yeah, oh, he's got a fucking finger and I just kept grabbing it without like shit. Anthony knew Billy had an injured hand. <laughs> the other custody officers listen and apparently do nothing. The key line of defense is a professional staff who are prepared to say, this isn't right here, I'm not happy with this, I'm prepared to do that. It takes staff to blow the whistle, right? And you have to ask yourself the question about why did nobody say, look, I'm not happy with what's going on here. Especially these female officers, they might have kids or something, that the older ones, like, what the, what's going on? Somebody, they probably blew the whistle, like he just said. G4S has had the government contract to run Medway since 1998. Last year, it was paid more than £10 million. My colleagues now trust me. They give me their take on how that contract works. G4S gets fined if it officially loses control in any way, like trainees fighting. Anthony tells me some staff have found a simple way around it. You have two or more trainees fighting, we've lost control of the centre. Yeah, so don't ever put it. That means they don't report it. If you have an incident with four kids, it will get split up into two separate incidents. That's how they do it. So they don't get fined. Well, lads from here. Anthony claims some duty operations managers have pressured him to lie to avoid fines. He tells me that once, even when three groups of lads had a fight, it wasn't reported. It was covered up. And what, it didn't go down as... What the hell? I can't do it. It never does. When a unit jumps a kid, it don't go down. No, because it's class with you've lost control. And we're not here to lose control. No. But yeah, I was told that because I was... Told Misreporting to avoid fines could be fraud. It could be. It's definitely fraud. I think that is a very serious allegation. And I think that's something that needs to be specifically investigated. And I wonder what has happened since this, this interview. Certainly if that was done with the knowledge of managers at G4S, then I think that would, that would be a very serious thing to add to, a very serious thing for them to have to answer. I think it would be very disturbing. I don't know is whether that in itself is, is something that needs the attention of the police. I've now been undercover at Medway for two months. Today is my last shift. Yeah? Crikey! That's not the attitude. This is Lee, not his real name. He's 16 years old and an orphan. His mum. See what I said? So Billy has no father, it looks, it would seem to be. This guy has no mother or father. Mum and dad both died before he was 10 years old. He has a conviction for robbery and came here from care. 
The second he got up in the morning, I, I knew he was out of character. And I could tell that he was really sad, and he's been, he's been down for the past couple of weeks. This week is the anniversary of his mum's death. Hey! 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 You want to calm down? Do you want to calm down? What's he doing? He's throwing the cube at the door. Go. Earlier, Lee was rude to Anthony. Anthony's still cross about it. El Eagle from Anthony once again, letting a 16-year-old who, hey. a 16-year-old orphan. What's going on, y'all? Who is currently, it's his mother's anniversary of his, like, come on, bro. Anthony needs some counseling. And he steps, I'm just gonna hit him. Fact. Yeah. No, I'm blurry, hold on. I need to be. Sadly, Anthony's right. Lee has a history of self harm. Completely insensitive. He's He's treated in his cell, put on constant monitoring, and his room is stripped. The last thing to be removed is a towel. Lee doesn't want to let go of it. My camera only gets a glimpse of what happens, but I see it clearly. Anthony came from behind and pulled him in a reverse choke and pulled him down onto the bed we seen him. and choked him from behind really, really hard. Um, and he kind of slammed him onto the bed quite hard. Anthony needs to be prosecuted in a court of law. He needs time. He doesn't need a suspended sentence. Doesn't need a suspended sentence. He doesn't need a fine. He doesn't need to be put on tag. He needs to be in there with them dudes. He need to be put inside with them other with them prisoner. Uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't kind of easy to be you know witnessing it. A duty operations manager called Gareth takes charge of the restraint, but this grieving boy's treatment doesn't get any better. For over three minutes, staff physically restrain Lee. Okay, stop there. He's saying bend his wrist, yeah, and then he does bend his wrist, right? I mean, it's pretty obvious what he's saying there, which is that the more you struggle and fight, the more it's going to hurt. It's as simple as that. Um, again, that's an improper use of those kind of techniques. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The restraint continues, and Lee is once again on the floor. That's so much be going through my mind that I can't say when I be watching this type of stuff. <laughs> That's why I just be having a straight face. Like, I be like, man, listen. It's just an abuse of power and it's abuse of methods. And child oh, abuse. When it's over, just like Billy, Lee's alone in his cell. In the staff room, Gareth and two other custody officers. Gareth and two other custody officers are going to be acting like victims. Officers concoct a story to justify their actions. Okay. There's no CCTV in the bedrooms, so it'll be their word against the trainees. They tell me what to write down. Oh, I'm not 
Agni. Um, Agni stumbled to the ground. I'm not sure. <laughs> Anthony, the meathead, stumbled to... Anthony looks like he works out and he's on gear. How did Anthony stumble to the ground from... From 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 the I forgot his name the orphan child, no offense, but that's what I remember. Him. How did they be like? Who reviews these? Who reads these papers and be like, okay, that sounds plausible. That sounds believable. Like, bro, you see, did he? Anthony wasn't assaulted. Yet I'm told to say that he was. When I won't go along with it, they try another approach. Oh, I was at the door. Yeah, but you weren't, it was only me and, that, me and him. You literally come seconds after. Oh, yeah, he does, doesn't he? I won't say Lee hit Anthony, so they decide I couldn't have seen everything, but I did. I was at the door throughout. I didn't realise you got caught. Ah, I didn't realise you got caught. No, I didn't. I thought you did. Yeah, no, I didn't. Oh, right. But yeah, I didn't. He appears to think it's funny. Anthony describes what he did to Lee, move by move. No way, I'm <laughs> Really, I keep choking, dash this on the bed and f***ing hell him in the face. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was sad. I had one arm pinned and one arm on his neck. So when we got him on the floor, that's when I started like, giving him dicks and yeah. a hand on his head and I popped up and broke his skull. <laughs> G4S haven't responded to us about our allegations. But they're not allegations when they're on camera. Claim the filming was illegal and that the program shouldn't be broadcast. G4S told BBC News they thoroughly vet their staff and that external monitors had not raised any concerns. These are extremely um, shocking allegations and have no part in our business or in any establishment that looks after young people. We were unaware of these allegations until the Panorama sent them to us and took immediate action to report them to the police and local authority. G4S is paid nearly £140,000 per year per inmate. 108 youngsters left here between April 2012 and April 2013. Nearly two-thirds re-offended within a year. I'd never give up hope, I must. I can't... can't have people treat him like that just because he's in an institution for doing wrong. To try and teach him the right way is the only way to get him fixed. And if he's around adults and authority figures that behave in such a manner, it's not going to fix him, it's going to make him worse. Since we informed G4S of our evidence, they have suspended seven custody officers. Gareth, who unnecessarily restrained Billy. Duty operations manager Chris, who choked him. And team leaders Matt and Anthony, who were bullying him. Four people. Billy has Four finished million. his sentence and is out of Medway. Kent Police have launched an investigation. Children are currently not being sent here. That's good. That's good, man. I mean, that's a start at least, man. That's, that's disturbing. I'm telling you, man. I'm going to tell y'all when I get off this. Tell her, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.